Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Sare Gama India Limited conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Banerjee. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, a warm welcome to you uh, to the Q1 FI24 results conference call of Starry Gamma India Limited. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to thank the management for giving us this opportunity. Today, uh, representing the management, we have Mr. Vikram Mehra, Managing Director, Mr. Pankaj Chaturvedi, CFO, Mr. Saket Sa, Head of Investor Relations, and Mr. Pankaj Kheria, Vice President of Investor Relations. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Vikram Mehra for his opening comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, and good afternoon to everyone. The biggest event of the last quarter was the approval finally coming from NCLT for the due merger of Digi Drive Limited. This new company now has the digital distribution mandate on a non-exclusive basis of Carva range of products, Opens publication business, and Sarigama's other non-core assets. We are in the process of getting this new company listed on the stock exchanges. The shareholders of Sarigama will get one share of Digi Drive for every five shares of Sarigama held by them, and the record date for the same was 27 July 2023. We expect the listing to be um, complete, done somewhere in the last week of August 23. The quarter uh, saw operating revenue of 163 crore and a PBT of 59 crore. Um, in our presentation, we this time again have shared the performance of the company over last 13 quarters, just to show you the, the cyclical trend that we people have uh, seen in Charigam all throughout. Where Q1 is the lowest quarter and Q3 is the highest quarter, and the same trend is continuing year after year after year. Uh, and we hope that we will further build up on the quarter one um, numbers in the quarter two and quarter three. If we look at the quarter numbers on a um, year-on-year basis, the revenues look on the flattish side, but it hides more than it tells. It's the event business, which is extremely cyclical and event dependent. Uh, where last year we had a large number of Dilji Dosan concerts that were scheduled in US and Canada in the first quarter of the year, which was not the case this year. This year, in fact, we have Australia concerts coming in, which is at the later part of the year. Um, so the Q1 number of events which were there in the last financial year were not there in this year. Otherwise, if you look at the music business, there was a pretty healthy growth of 17% in Q1-2. The other part I want to tell you guys, share with you guys upfront, is that company is in dialogue to settle a very old contingent liability, which is presently under litigation. Discussions with the party are in pretty advanced stage, and based on the conservative policy that we people follow. We have provided for an estimated settlement amount in our books during Q1. This is the only reason why the uh, there has been an increase in the other expenses in the P&L, and this has absolutely nothing to do with the ongoing business operations of the company. This is a very very old legal case that's going on. The big story in the music business for us in this quarter. is eventually we people achieving the leadership position in the hindi music segment also while last year uh, we were able to get into leadership position on telugu malayalam bhojpuri and gujarati hindi was still some time far away because most of our releases had got postponed to financial year 23 24 two of them uh, finally got released in uh, or are getting released now so q1 the biggest hit of the country at an all india level have been the two songs of zara hatke zara bachke it's a vicky kaushal sara ali khan and the music was given by sachin jigger 
the songs were there at the number one position on every possible chart in India, whether it's Spotify or it's uh, Airtel Wink. In fact, in YouTube, uh, Tere Vaste was a global number one music video for a very, very long time. The songs were also rating at number one on various radio stations, whether it's in, in the terms of number of times the songs were played or the local countdowns, which is presented by companies like Mirchi. Um, um, even on Shazam, it was emerging as the top song. So the, the, the music has done very, very well for us. It was immediately followed by Rocky Rani Ki Prem Kani Ka, one song that got released uh, at the end of the last quarter and did very, very well. It's an Arijit Singh song. In Telugu, we had another postponed movie finally releasing its first song called Kushi. Um, again, a super hit music and the good part about Kushi's music is that it's not just Telugu, but the Tamil and the Hindi versions have also done very well for us. Uh, for, for, for a company which wants to go back and establish a leadership position at an All India level, this was a very, very important and a crucial step for us. That on Hindi also, on an overall basis, we will be able to prove that we are number one in terms of listenership share. I'm happy and glad to share with you that if you look at at an all India level for the full quarter, new content released during the quarter and the listenership of that content, that means all the songs that were released in April to June and their viewership slash listenership, we have got a clear market leadership at this juncture at an all India level. Even in Malayalam, we got a massive hit, a movie called Romancho. Uh, songs fared very, very well, which allowed us to continue with the leadership position in Malayalam. If I look at the next quarter, um, which is a Q2, the going looks pretty good. Rocky Rani Ki Prem Kani Ke next level of songs have come out, uh, all doing very, very well. Uh, case in point is a song called Wat Chunka, um, again dominating most of the charts in the country and abroad. Uh, with the movie getting released today, we believe that the traction for the songs are going to become even bigger as we go ahead. We also have Kushi Ki other songs coming out. We have uh, two big original songs in Hindi coming out, sung by Arijit and Babsha. So we have a pretty decent lineup uh, in front of us for Q2. And if I look at Q3, Q4, the second half of the year, which is always bigger from the entertainment industry perspective, we have big movies like in Tamil, we have Captain Miller uh, and uh, Kangua. These two are both are, one is Dhanush, other is Surya. Both of them top stars of Tamil. Their movies, music is going to get released. Uh, Sudeep Kitcha, who is the number one star of Kannada, his movie uh, is getting released in the later part of the year and the music will come out. In Hindi, you have, um, again, Vicky Kaushal, Amy's movie, Kumere Mehbu, Mere Sanam. Uh, we have uh, Air Rehman music, Imtiaz Ali and Diljeet acted Chamkila. Then we have Ajay Devgan's Medan. In Malayalam, we have Bazooka, um, which is a, a Mamuti movie. We have a very big Gippy film coming, Warning 2. The music of all these films is sitting out there with us. So we see as we people go forward with leadership position now that we people have got onto this number one position, uh, we see ourselves fully holding on to this position. Also, strategically, I need to state this. Um, it's easy for us to take a conservative position on newer content and just take a, a, a few movies here and there uh, from the new content perspective. As a company, we, we don't believe in that policy. Uh, Sarigama, as the erstwhile HMV, has always had bought the biggest music and this is what kept this company relevant for so many years. Now also, we are very clear, we will pick up all the major big popular titles that are going to come out mm -hmm. which is not only going to make money for the company for the next two three four years but will ensure that the company keeps on making large amount of money even 20 30 40 years on the line so that you or i may not be there but you as a shareholder on whichever management team is sitting here in 2060 also can take a lot of pride in the content that we people procured in 2020s, the way we take people take pride in the content that was picked up in 50s and 60s and 70s and we still make money off it. On the monetization side, I have been saying this for some time that the big changes that are happening is 
more and more streaming platforms are now realizing that they need to move towards a subscription model you already have uh, three big guys all announcing over the last 90 to 100 days that the model is now fully moving behind the paid wall there are only three guys left who are still pursuing a free model but all three of them have also sent messages which is number 1 number 2 number 3 in the market all three of them have sent a clear message that they move to want to move to a subscription model uh, am i saying india will never have a free market it will be silly on my part to go and state that uh, india will be a mix like in television business india will have a mix of subscription and advertising but just like in the television business where subscription at one time subscription was just a nominal number it was all the, all the revenue the tv channels used to come from advertising which is now completely changed and a larger chunk now starts coming from subscription something very similar is going to be happening in india too where on the music side a greater and greater chunk of revenue is going to move towards the subscription side and when it moves to a subscription our our uh, yield per song heard is going to go up i've shared the match with multiple times in various calls so i won't bore you by repeating how that will work but as we move to a subscription there will be short term pain uh, as as platforms move from a free model to going behind completely a paid model their revenues are also going to fall for a quarter or two quarters and so will there be an impact coming on our revenue too the, the good part is when you are a very well diversified company like saregama which has a very which has a dependence for very limited dependence on revenues coming from streaming we are able to go back and we will be able to manage this this ups and downs that will keep on happening on the subscription revenue in the short term very very easily we are we though we are sharing with you that there will be pressures coming in uh, on the subscription side we are still holding to our guidance that overall uh, music licensing revenue should be growing at the rate of anything around 22 23% this year we don't see us um changing that the youtube uh, revenues have gone up substantially and for us it's a disproportionately higher number that are coming in remember traditionally the music that we people own we had only the audio rights um we were the only label who had only audio rights and not the video rights now with the uh, aggression that we people are showing and picking up newer content all this content is coming along with the video right here if you check out all india trending on youtube at any particular time out of the 20 30 songs that they show in all india trending list we typically as a label have anything between 7 to 10 songs sitting in that particular list this says a lot on the popularity of the music that we are picking up and also the direct implication on the revenues that we are making right now from the uh, on the video side we have also um, further beefed up our publishing side of the business uh, we are getting more aggressive uh, in terms of giving licenses for our music to various films uh, as well as brands and creating songs specific to particular brands up till now what used to happen brands used to have their advertising and we used and they used to use a song in their advertising now we are proactively going to the brands and saying why not we develop a song which is completely suited to their brand uh, which helps them in their marketing while we can also go out there and monetize that song and in fact we also get a license fee from the brand so that part of the business is also getting shaped up more and more brands are realizing that to talk to youth music is the strongest art and with our leadership position and perception in the market brands are very comfortable coming out there and working with us our work on growing revenue from our catalog continues more and more uh, lo-fi versions or trap mix versions which are uh, or acoustic versions or this is the kind of music right now with the newer generation and the younger people like to listen a lot um while we maintain the the lyrical quality or the composition of the original song it's a completely new instrumentation which is created at literally at times at a zero cost or a very nominal cost making the song relevant to the younger generation and more importantly giving a fresh lease of life uh, from the copyright perspective to the new rendition of the song that people will release 
We also come, continue with a campaign to keep on uh, inviting more and more entries from the budding talent, um, whether it's a bathroom singer or it's a talented guy uh, who has won some contest in a smaller town like Bareilly. All of them to keep on sending their cover songs across to us. Uh, in return of which we people share 10% royalties with these people. Uh, this is allowing once again us to grow revenues without spending money and also to improve the popularity of our catalog music. On the last call, uh, we had shared with you that uh, the royalty expenses that had gone up in Q4 was a one-off event because we had uh, adjusted the, the entire royalty payout that we had to make to singers for the entire year in a single quarter. We have lived up to our commitment. If you see the royalty expenses this year as the percentage of revenue, they have come down. Uh, and this is a steady state in which we are going to be operating because now we are paying them on every quarter basis and it will not come on a cumulative annual basis across. So royalties are back to where they are supposed to be. On the overall basis, I still maintain we have just touched the tip of the iceberg. Um, we are not going to get uh, swayed by doing some uh, short-term things to improve profitability for a quarter or two. We will continue on taking steps to build foundation for this company to be the most relevant entertainment company in India uh, for the next 50 years. Um, the, all the necessary steps, whether in terms of spends that we people are doing on data analytics, predictive AI, um, generative AI, building tools uh, for us on the marketing side. We will continue taking those steps because we believe that's going to make this company far more resilient and powerful in the decades to come on not just the music front but the overall entertainment front. The other edge overall that we end up getting is a diversified business model. We are not dependent on any one player, any one business stream and within that also any one partner too much. There was a time that some of our global partners were having a problem in terms of their advertising revenues. We were not that affected because our dependence on any one partner is not that high. Now that all of them are seeing an upswing, hopefully it's great news for us. But the good part is there isn't too much dependence on any one partner. We are not tied to the fortunes of any global MNC. Karva. Um, Karva. I have been stating this, Karma just running on its own momentum and it, the journey continued uh, during uh, this quarter also. If I look at a quarter on quarter basis, there has been a crazy growth that we people have seen. It's a 50% growth. We have touched close to 1.49 lakh units have been sold. Uh, this compared to 98,000 units that we had sold of Karma in that Q1 last year. The big uh, sales drivers continue to be Karma Mini and Karma Mobile which is also explaining that the revenue growth is lower than the unit growth. But remember, uh, Karva is profitable, Karva is not making losses, and more importantly, Karva helps us a lot on the catalog marketing side. It, it really keeps some music relevant uh, as we people go forward. Films and series vertical did not have any release happening during the quarter. We just had our TV serials on Sun TV. Q1 is traditionally a weaker quarter from advertising perspective because most advertising goes into IPL. Um, so Q1 every year we go through the same pressure. Um, this quarter was no different. We have one movie which is getting released uh, of us in Q2. Q3, Q4, the lineup is very, very strong. There are lots of big titles that are coming both on the Malayalam and uh, Punjabi side. I want to reiterate um, that we are holding our guidance on the films and movie side of a 25% growth in revenue and a 15% margin. Looking at the Q1 numbers, some of you may have doubts how we're going to go and achieve it. We are very confident with the lineup which is sitting in Q3 and Q4 that on an annual basis we will achieve this 25% revenue uh, growth number with a 15% margin. Let me not uh, talk about the live events business. This is the feedback received from multiple investors. Uh, we have decided to present uh, even the business, carve it out, out of the films and television and present it as a separate vertical so that you can see the revenue and profits. 
please remember it's a absolutely new vertical for us it will require larger amount of investments uh, to build this up um, we saw uh, in this quarter disco dancer being released for the first time in india um, some of you may have heard about it the it was widely covered in every major newspaper and online publication it got very positive review both from the critic side as well as the customer side we people but i have to be to be honest with you we people had to market it a lot because this is the first time a concept like a musical show where our story is being told with a combination of dialogues and music uh, being presented in india it's a relatively newer concept for indian audience we are either used to seeing a story in form of a film and theater or we go to uh, the musical theater only to listen to people singing songs now uh, this is a combination we are which is a very common thing in in in, in us or uk is a newer concept in india and we spent a good amount of money to go and promote it we believe uh, and hence there are losses which are people have written during the quarter the entire cost has of marketing has been charged off um we are confident in a period of 12 to 18 month horizon this uh, segment will also turn profitable and if it's not we are very open to completely having a relook at this new business that we got our feet to overall um the film business if i take both these segments together film and series segment and the live event segment the total capital allocation as we have committed to you at any particular time of the total capital that is deployed the total capital allocation to these two segments will never exceed 18% that's a internal guideline that we people work with and at this juncture the number is closer to 12% so we still have a large elbow room uh, left in front of us but we are clear we are not going to just because we have an 18% 18% of the ceiling we don't want to go and plan to touch it at any particular time so overall uh, we are happy uh, with the way quarter has shaped up music segment is solid um overall if the growth looks flat it's only because live and uh, films live had a big quarter uh, last year on q1 um by the time we end the year right now we are confident that each of the segments are going to grow at a rate that we people have gone out there and shared with you in the past thank you and we are open to questions now thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Swapnil Potuke from JM Financials. Please go ahead. Hey, hi Vikram. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Hi. Uh, so I just have a couple of questions. Uh, one is with respect to your growth rate in the music licensing business. Uh, your music business has grown 17 percent. Your volumes in the Kawa business have grown more than 50 percent. Uh, does that imply that our, our music licensing business has grown significantly lower than 17%? Why? Why? And if that is so, uh, uh, and 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 the fact that some of our songs are doing quite well, topping some of the charts, uh, why is that not getting re- reflected in t- in terms of our top top line growth in the licensing business? So let me answer your second question first, so that you understand how um, the, the commercials work. in in a music licensing business uh, this is not the days of cds and cassettes that an album becomes hit right now i can sell more cassettes and cds all our deals are covered under minimum guarantees so as long as the, the person and the overflows are booked only when the deal gets over so unless a deal was getting over on 29th to 30th of the june and the overflow were hit us there is no way that the impact of quarter one success can be seen in quarter one alone it you will see it only when the overflows at the end of the deal are going to come in or if it's a fixed fee deal then basis is higher performance we will be able to negotiate a much higher fixed fee deal 
so there is no immediate same day correlation or a causal effect relationship which is there between success the youtube success of a song today and the revenue is going up also today principally uh coming to the first part no a music licensing revenue has shown a pretty decent growth we show the segments separately only at the end of the year um however tempted i may be right now to share the numbers with you to tell you the growth is pretty decent i will resist it uh we are holding on to our projection of 23% growth overall on the music licensing side we have said this over the last 4 to 5 years we have a track record that uh, we have maintained these numbers and i am pretty confident we'll maintain the numbers this year also right uh and 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 the second question that i wanted to ask is the uh, is the uh, losses or, or the cash burn that we expect in the events business uh have we uh, internally uh, taken a, you know uh, do we have any uh, number in mind that uh, you would burn a certain amount of uh you did mention that uh, it will take around 20 or 12 to 18 months to be profitable uh, but but any quantification in terms of actual uh, burn that you expect in that period would be so uh, so are uh, do we are we got an internal uh, number that we people are saying that any particular time should not go beyond that yes it is we at this juncture as per the plan but for you what a comfort i can give you is uh, this cost hit we people take when we share the adjusted ebitda margin because you're not capitalizing it you're charging it off completely so adjusted ebitda margin uh, of the at the company level is not going to be falling this below 32 33% that we have always maintained right live even the business you need to understand strategically is also critical for us that if we people want to control artist and 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 for artist live is a very important part we as a, as a company we are clear we are not relying only on the firstly the laurels of our past by doing only recreations of older music we want to create music for tomorrow tomorrow music is going to come both from film side and the newer generation is getting more and more comfortable with original music the way it happens in america or anywhere else we need to be prepared for the situation that if suddenly original music non film music starts becoming big in that case artist relationship is going to be the biggest differentiator between labels an artist relationship is not just about who is going to go back and pick my phone because i've been there but artist will pick up everybody's phone but who which label can offer what for the in the path of artist growth and all these are great areas that we can offer to the artist saying that if you work with us it's not just songs that we can release for you i can do artist management for you and it can also manage your entire live business but that does not mean live is going to become a lost leader we believe once we have been able to establish ourselves um in the initial days that what the saregama life stand for this will turn profitable the real at the operating level actually there's typically no problem in this the problem becomes marketing and that's what we need to do in the initial days to establish what this concept is right got it and just so uh, uh, one final question if i can squeeze in um Uh, can you uh, give a sense of uh, how much uh, 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 what percentage of the PVC funds are still we are still on the balance sheet uh, uh, given that you have now started deploying some of those funds uh, towards the uh, newer content that you mentioned so as of now we are not using uh, the internal accruals of ours are enough right now to fund all our content acquisition so we have 710 crore uh, which is still sitting out there on our balance sheet from QIP Caught it, Vikram. Thanks a lot for uh, taking my question. Yep. All the best. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Udhaya Prakash from Value Research India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir. Uh, congrats on the great numbers on the music segment. Uh, I, I request you be a little louder. Can't hear you. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah, better. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have three questions. Uh, my first question is that you have said that you are going to pick up bigger content going forward, uh, most probably big budget films. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons why uh, you, along with many other production companies, both was that is because they ga- probably guarantee a set number of streams automatically uh, due to the star power that uh, it automatically it attracts. Do you think that? 
because more and more uh, music production companies will come towards uh, these kinds of movies the content the cost that you at uh, which you acquire this content would be inflated so let me answer for your question number 1 first i don't want to take the names of my competitors but if you please go language by language uh, the big film music areas are hindi telugu tamil malayalam and kannada in each of the languages there are two or max three play music labels that are playing it out uh, the entry barriers in music label business is very very high that's why globally there are only three music labels they some of the global labels are not there in india india is an only exception and in india also in any market there are only two to three labels so i am not saying there is no competition but it's not that there are 10 people fighting it out the production house also understands the deals are very very clear that if i am going and acquiring a large budget movie it's not just some money because of which um, a rocky rani came to us or a zara hatke zara bachke came to us and you can check this out with the respective production houses also in in a one on one dialogue it's the marketing ability of a company which goes a very long way to convince a film producer whether they want to work with the company or not a a very good example is the recent movie zara hatke zara bachke which is a vicky kaushal sara ali khan movie uh, the movie got a massive opening and the production house has accepted publicly because of the very huge success of the song and we had played a very important role in promoting the song a lot uh unlike the western world where it's the trailer of a movie which convinces people to watch a film in india it's primarily the success of the song before the release of the film because of which movie gets a big opening so we believe that strength of ours will always put us in a very good position with each of these production houses second also remember with most of these houses we have a relationship going on for 30 40 50 60 times 70 years old the royalties are still being paid to them so they also have this comfort level that at saregama um the deal is not only for a day if you do work with them saregama is one of those very few upfront and honest companies that will keep on paying you royalties in perpetuity so oh, understood and my next question is as a music production company do you have control over any aspect of uh, the album uh, be it the number of songs or the length of a song or a- any kind of, uh, you know anything related to the album or is it uh, all at the discretion of the creator only Uh, we have uh, most of the times right now most production houses work with us very very close some of the factors that you raise like the number of songs and all that this to is part of the commercial deal itself so when we people go and acquire all this is very clearly stated that how many songs will be there what will be the kind of situations of the song in 99 out of 100 times or 100 out of 100 times music composer is also finalized what we don't have a control on i'll be very honest is that uh, in that song when it's a picturization is happening what is the actor wearing and what is the actress wearing that is completely in the hands then of the film director unlike an original song if i'm releasing non film then i'll have control over that too in film you don't get that control but on the audio part the production houses work with us very closely Okay, so by that, uh, while you are finalizing the deal, deal itself, you pretty much know everything that you have to know about the album, music wise. Yeah, yeah, you do. In fact, we know it at every stage. The most production houses also need to sound off and bounce ideas. Um, so they they work closely with us. It becomes more of a partnership model as the songs start getting developed. Okay. So my final question is that. Uh, uh, as the contribution of films and tv segment to our revenue has improved uh, in last 5 years uh, in fy23 it was around 20 uh, it was around 20 to 22% of our revenue but due to this factor do you think the lack of releases in many one or two quarters which you may t- which you may have done deliberately will affect their revenues going forward since they form a huge part of our revenue is, is this something that we should expect going forward Yeah, it is. So uh, the only part of my film and theme, uh, TV segment, I don't like is the lumpy behavior. Uh, often the film release date is is may not even be in my hand. Um, it also depends a lot right now, which is the right window where we can go and release our film so that there is no competing film 
that is of a bigger star coming on the same day so a lot of variables start playing so you will have uh, some amount of lumpiness our hope is as the the size of a film and series business becomes bigger uh, there should not be any quarter where there is no release coming in um we are we are we are hoping and trying that it builds up that way but the very nature of it is lump okay sir thank you if i could squeeze in one last question and okay. last in last con call you had stated that uh, you are remaining conservative uh, about uh, spending at qib many because any time you go on for acquisition the valuations are so inflated uh, is this still continuing are you uh, trying to finalize any deal during this financial year or in constant no. dialogue we are very very clear we will do deals either in terms of content buying or uh buying positions in companies that help us in the marketing of music because this money is going to be used only for music um is not going to be used for film business or karma business um we will do it only when we believe right now it's value accretive to our investors um if it's not value accretive to our investors then we if need we will we sit on the fund or use these funds for new content acquisition rather than going out there on the catalog side uh, are we in dialogue we are in dialogue uh with people and uh, we'll share with you whenever the timing is right okay thank you that's it for my side thank you the next question comes on the line of bala murali krishna from oman investment advisors please go ahead yeah good evening uh, mr kam congratulations uh, guys around number i would like to know about this uh, film segment uh, so i think for, for this year we have planned only three releases so what could be the plan for the number of films per year and uh, down the line three four years so so i i'll not go on the number of films i will go back on the revenue that we are writing on film production um we this year we are saying right now we should be growing at 25% that segment and in fact i'm holding on to that uh, guidance on a short to medium term basis every year we see a film and uh, series business growing at 25% while the total capital allocation keeps on remaining at the upper limit of 18% Okay, that's great. And uh, regarding this, the library we have around uh, state film or something like that. So all these films are uh, uh, satellite rights are already sold, or any film satellite rights is still pending. Uh, we can uh, expect any more details from that. So there is a combination. There are rights. There are um, uh, the newer films. Most of the rights are gone. Some of the older films rights come back to us because we sell only time uh, duration based rights. we don't uh, we, are, we are licensing and not selling so often uh, if satellite rights go away after 10 years they come back so this keeps on happening um, the the bigger revenue clearly is connected to the newer films and most of the newer films are still going through the first tranche of licensing so when when we can expect this uh, newer films uh, uh, will come back to us for again right uh, which year so, we can expect some of the youth films the absolutely first round that people are launching 17 came back from the first platform already gone on to the second platform so this keeps on happening i uh, remember the earlier set of films that sarigama was making under the youth brand name were relatively smaller films made for the digital platforms we are now making bigger films in malayalam and punjabi primarily uh, which are going to hit the theatrical world also so on one more thing and lastly on this uh, uh, like uh, we are focusing on these two languages only is there any specific reason or we can expand to other languages also in future so uh, uh, at this juncture when i look at the um, two parameters are very crucial for us we step back one uh, we want to have a guarantee that 70 to 80% of the cost of the film is um, revenue connected to that is guaranteed before the theatrical release uh, that's an important criteria with which we people approach the film business we we rely on theatrical only between 20 to 30% of the cost of a film is put on theatrical so that we know that uh, um, if everything goes wrong also at least anything between 70 to 80% of the cost is recovered um second um we are looking at a 15% margin um in this business minimum We, if i look at these two parameters 
then the languages like Malayalam, uh, Punjabi. In fact, some to some extent, Tamil and Telugu also fit the bill better. Um, there is a there is a higher probability that the films get over on time, within budgets, and we are able to get a good value for those films. But are we open to other projects also? Yes, we are. Provided the other project also guarantee us that 70 to 80 percent of the cost of the film will get um, the revenue connected to that is guaranteed even before we start spending the money. That's a basic principle with which we approach our films business. We are not relying too much on theatre. Yeah, that's very helpful. All the best for your future quarters. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question comes on the line of Aditya Nahar from Alpna Enterprises. Please go ahead. Hi Vikram, how are you? Hi. Uh, great to hear you again. Uh, Vikram, just uh, wanted to check with you this provision that we have made uh, against a settlement. Uh, if you could, uh, if you could share what the amount of this is. See, the matter is at this juncture being substituted. And it's still pending a formal closure. We cannot give you more details at this juncture. I'm, um, I'm, I'm quite hopeful right now that in Q2, everything should get closed and that's a time we'll share with you. Okay. Thanks so much, Vikram. Best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Ravi Kumar Naredi from Naredi Investments Private Limited. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Vikram. Aviji. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now the result is subdue comparatively last quarter, but uh, my question is song of Jara Jara Hatke, Jara Bajke, make blockbuster. First, congratulations to you. Uh, can uh, we have write off the cost of uh, music uh, in this uh, June quarter, or what is the policy? I think you shared the policy multiple times now. The marketing cost is no, no, fully no. written off uh, okay. in the June quarter itself. And the cost of the content is going to be uh, written off right now in a 10-year in a horizon where the largest chunk is going to be written off in year one itself. Okay. And sir, so I you. actually, if you look at the overall business for us, uh, personally, we don't think that the quarter performance is subdued. Uh, please take out the events uh, uh, business vertical which is creating. That's why we have shared the information or events separately. Look at at a music uh, part which which you are comparing with. Um, I think we people have gone back and delivered a pretty recent performance while we have taken the cost of Kushi also, Virat Ke, Zara Bajke also and Rocky Rani also. So please understand we are building the company for 30 years down the line. We are not building the company. Definitely, for definitely. That we agree. That we agree. Or the the company will be in the, uh, high in the next 50 year. I am so promising on this future. So because the music has no alternate so far. So ask a thing, please check. I think it's really a part. Every year for last five years, you will see my Q4 um, performance of the previous year to Q1 of the current year. Typically, they go right now at, at two three percent. So you the the numbers go right now Q1. Uh, goes at a number, Q2 increases at, Q3 becomes even bigger, Q4 comes down, but still bigger than Q2, and then the next year Q1 starts, we have the Q4 ended of last year. So we have, we have a clear pattern in which our performance keeps on moving. My overflows are have a particular time when they come in. Uh, we don't, we try to do more and more minimum guarantee deals um, in minimum with overflows. By, um, rather than in a fixed fee deal, you can recognize revenue whenever. We do variable deals where revenue is recognized only when it's getting accrued across to us. And there's a large overflow that typically ends up coming in specific quarters. Yes, sir. Or still we need to deploy extra fund uh, as the earlier. This is my request. We are. We are. And, um, and that's a very stated position of Sarigama as a company that we will go out there and uh, one, uh, invest in multiple languages, take leadership position on each of the languages because then the over, when you get into a number one position across multiple languages and the power of catalog that we have, I think at that time we will be able to drive efficiencies in terms of better yield far better than anybody was able to do today in, in the market. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much and wishing you all the best.
Thank you. The next question comes from the line of CA Garvit Goyal from Invest Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, please. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, you mentioned if uh, no value exchanging deal happens, uh, we will use the funds for acquisition of new users. But at the same time, we are saying that we uh, we do have suffice uh, internal internal approval for uh, acquisition of new users. So I'm not getting what exactly uh, we are thinking. Uh, are we caught in a situation like uh, we can't deploy the funds at high valuations, but the valuations are not getting favorable? So uh, can kindly put some color on this strategy, sir. Uh, for QIP funds are going to be used for both things. QIP funds are going to be uh, used for inorganic acquisitions, acquisitions that are either on music catalogs, either they help us on the content side or they help us with um, acquiring companies that can help us on the marketing or music side. The two big pillars on which the music business is built. Um, we, uh, the current uh, requirement of a new content acquisition that we people are doing is getting met as I talk to you right now through our internal accruals, our stated position is that we want to acquire 30% of all new content that's coming in. Nothing stops us from acquiring 35 or 40% of new content also. So if we, the management is constantly evaluating whether the QIP funds as we go forward are better deployed, picking up older catalogs, picking up companies which are specializing in marketing of music or picking up a larger share of newer content. But what I am assuring you that this money is, um, uh, is invested right now, keeping in mind principal being secure and will not be used for anything apart from music. So that thing I understand, but uh, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, one and a half year ago, our strategy was that uh, most of the uh, fund, most of the percentage of this fund will be utilized towards the acquis inorganic acquisition side. So that thing I think we are uh, something uh, differentiating now. So that was what I was asking. And we believe right now that any acquisition is going to be value accretive. We will go ahead. We had done a smaller acquisition right in the beginning. Uh, after that, we are still evaluating multiple players, both on the content side and marketing side. The moment we believe that something is sticking mark and it's value accretive to the investors, we will pick it up. And last one, you were saying this year we will uh, announce something uh, regarding the share. We will, uh, if we are not getting 100%, we will... Uh, get some percentage of the uh, company to be in to be done. So is it likely to happen in this year? So, uh, uh, let, me, if, uh, let me do something and then I'll share with you. Okay, so that was so much. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Navneet Bhaiya from an individual investor. Uh, hi, Vikram. Hi, Navneet. I have uh, three questions. The first is uh, uh, the 10 pesos that you get, uh, you know, per song that is heard on a YouTube channel or whichever channel. Uh, does that ever come for renegotiation, you know, with uh, inflation or maybe cost of content also going up or that remains fixed forever? No, so, uh, it's on an average 10 paisa. Uh, B, if, if your question is, do I see the rate going up in the short run? Doubtful on the free side. Uh, the, the yield will go up because more and more people are going to go behind the paid wall and if they go behind the paid wall, this yield can become two and a half to five times higher on a per song heard basis for the guys who are listening to the song behind a paid wall. But on the free side, I don't see this yield going up. The real uh, kicker is coming because of the uh, deeper penetration of each of these services and more number of songs being heard on a daily basis. Okay, so uh, again on the free side, uh, any specific reason why I couldn't go up uh, inflation per annum? Uh, at least that should be, uh, you know, there in the free. Uh, the free. Let me. I have shared this in the past also. Remember, uh, on the free side, the streaming platforms don't have a viable business model today. Um, the only way they can make money is through advertising. Uh, there is limited amount of advertising money that chases audio. So the streaming companies, if they are promoting free, they also need to find a way to make money. Uh, and we understand those pressures. That's why world over, in every country of the world here, streaming platforms can move towards a paid side. You have 600 million paid subscribers for audio streaming world over. 
In India, we have seen video streaming has done a decent enough job on the paid side. So it's just a matter of time, all these streaming companies in India are also going to have a very effective paid business, which means great, they make money and we make money. Understand, okay. Uh, my second question is, how big is the international, uh, you know, song segment, English song segments in India? As in, if you have any percentage terms, uh, how big is that? How big is the international uh, content, uh, you know, heard in India? Uh, uh, that's a, a, a metro phenomena. So it's there. Uh, it's each now, I'm, let's be clear: in the Bombay and Delhi's of the world, the youngsters also listen to a lot of. Uh, Western music uh, or Korean mu mu music for that matter. Uh, but it's still, uh, even with those people right here, uh, every time they're with their friends and there's a party happening, um, it, it finally it's going to come back to Arijit Singh and Badshah um, or, or a Ranveer Kapoor or a Ranveer Singh movie song. The moment you go to smaller towns, it's all Indian music. Okay, so as of now, for us as a company, uh, even in the medium term, there would be no plans of uh, acquiring content uh, in the English uh, segment, right? There is. So uh, we have a very publicly stated position there that uh, we believe with 1.4 billion Indians here and a large amount of uh, 1.4 billion Indians, the entire population of Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Pakistan, there's a large enough captive market and parts of Malaysia on the Tamil side um, and parts of Singapore. Uh, there is a large enough population right now for our music and we want to focus there and get a clear, distinct number one position. Understood. And uh, my third question, which is more of an understanding. So there are a lot of um, user created mashup songs, which is like a three minute songs with, you know, 10, 10 different songs in it, uh, of which maybe there are three from Sare Gama and the remaining from some other uh, labels. How how does the uh, revenue sharing work exactly with that? So uh, tell me where, um, it all depends platform to platform, give me an example, are you talking about YouTube? Yeah, YouTube, uh, there are somebody. In YouTube, if yeah. somebody is going and running a video where five songs are being used, the revenue which is getting generated that uh, YouTube is going to share with us will be split across those five songs. Okay, understood. And you would have, uh, you know, uh, analytics to figure out as an if one song is used for 50% yeah, of the time. Yeah. Absolutely, that is there. So we have got advanced analytics. YouTube model is very, very strong. Their fingerprinting is really um, right there. And uh, I haven't seen cases where uh, the division that they do of the revenue based on each of these songs goes wrong. Understood. Okay. Uh, fair enough. That's all. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Saket Mehrotra from Tusk Investments. Please go ahead. Hi Vikram. Uh, Hi. In the earnings, in the earnings disclosure, there was a mention of uh, a 12 CR revision on contractual terms uh, for the revenue. So, does this have to do with our existing contracts, or were these any fresh uh, contracts uh, that we went, we've uh, undertaken? Pankaj will just take this one. Yeah, hi Saki. So, uh, hi. this is part of uh, all existing contracts. It just happens that, you know, we follow a very conservative accounting policy of revenue recognition, you know, based on the virtual certainty. So, at times, there are uh, contracts which are under negotiation. There are, you know, formal contracts may not be in place. The renewal is in process. So, we book the revenue based on the estimates. Now, when the renegotiation takes place, there may be uh, a difference that would arise and we will recognize in that quarter. And like you are asking, at times you know, people do ask uh, about how the renegotiations take place and uh, the nuances of revenue recognition. We thought we will make an upfront disclosure so the position is very clear to our, all our investors. Okay, so uh, will it be fair to assume that like this is like an increase in pricing that we have uh, we've managed to get from whatever negotiation we've done, right? Like that is what we are working with. Yeah, uh, what you think is right, okay, this, this is renegotiation has been done and we affected the revenue in this quarter. It also means uh, that, you know, from quarter to quarter this could differ based on the position and the negotiation.
But okay. The revenue okay. which is fully recognized, accrued and recognized, it's not future revenue. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And also on this uh, events business, right? Uh, like, I, I mean, what's the way forward? Because you know, we've just emerged a loss making business, and you know, how much drag do we see with this going forward? I understand it's a part of your overall strategy, but if you could just give us some guidance on what the expectation is from the year forward. So I have uh, answered this. Somebody else also asked this question. Um, see, we on the overall basis, uh, we are not allowing. E we will never allow events to drag down our adjusted EBITDA below 30 to 33 percent. Um, events is a business that we people are trying because we believe strategically it's going to help us a lot as we go forward in our artist relationship side and also in India um, there have been various studies that have been that have come out that for people. Um, as disposable income goes up, go up, people will be seeking out for entertainment options outside their home too. There is a limit to which digital consumption will happen. People will seek out other things too. And live may play a very, very important role there. Keeping both these things in mind, we have gone ahead with this. Uh, we are going to reevaluate this entire thing over what anything between 12 to 18 months and see whether things are moving as per the plan or not. If it's not, we take the tough call. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Swapnil or 2K from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, just one clarification, Vikram. So, uh, since uh, most some of the uh, uh, music OTT platforms are moving to, uh, behind the pay, pay wall, now, uh, is it possible that our minimum guarantees will, uh, uh, the contracts that we have, they will not get renewed at, a, um, let's say, uh, incremental levels or, uh, and, uh, and the, the business model will slightly change as in like your, you will, uh, the visibility of the revenues will be lower. Uh, I said there will be a pressure when we move from free to pay. If there were minimum guarantees, then there would have been no pressure. But uh, for us, music labels, uh, and streaming platforms to build a sustainable model where the revenues for music labels are guaranteed not just for next 12 months but for the next decades. It's important that the streaming platforms also have a sustainable model. Uh, the only way they can have a sustainable model is they move to a subscription. So all of us are helping the streaming platforms to move from free to pay by moving away from this concept of minimum guarantees. All of us are going to get paid right now on the basis of our actuals. That yield is going to be far higher on a per song basis, but the first two, three quarters when those guys are building up their numbers, there will be pressures coming in. It's not just one label that's doing it, that's a global practice uh, that happens. So the guys who continue with free have to still go back and give them minimum guarantees. Guys are going fully behind the paid wall, we are there to support them in these quarters. But because we know this was coming and we have been planning for this and urging the streaming platforms to go behind the paid wall. At Saregama, we have built multiple sources of revenue now, which will ensure that we still hold on to our uh, growth numbers. Right. And just an extension to that, uh, since you are holding your guidance for the full year, so do you are you suggesting that your YouTube revenues will be significantly higher and that would uh, offset the impact of the near term volatility? Yeah. I can't share anything beyond this. Uh, See, also remember on the streaming side, also three of the biggest guys who are biggest who control the industry are still free. Not that they have gone behind the paid wall. Um, so the top three are still behind the free path. The remaining guys are all behind the paid wall. So the journey has started. A journey which we believe right now is going to make large, a much better yield and profitability both for us and the streaming platform. The journey towards paid. Right, right. Thanks a lot, uh, Vikram, for that open show. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Anirudh Shetty from Solidarity Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I had three questions. So my first question was, uh, you know, we are amortizing our content charges over 10 years. So uh, was this done uh, to uh, more accurately match our content costs with what uh, over what time period we will get our revenue and um, 
also if you can give a break up of you know how much goes on your one and then you know two three just to get an indicated sense of how upfront uh, are the uh, you know how staggered are the content cost charges in some sense uh, i think the answer to the first question is it's in uh, sync with the global standards any company which is in the uh, uh, genuinely large enough content creation mode um, look at the three global companies which are doing this in india it's actually only two of the companies which are genuinely into like new content creation um, the number one player um, and from revenue perspective we are the number two player today both of us only are not spending large amounts of money uh, so we looked at the, the our global benchmark the companies we look up to and all of them follow similar policy um on a overall basis when you're saying what to give you an idea that for a song uh, which is getting released the numbers assuming marketing to be 20% of the cost the numbers will be something around 38% of the total 36 36 36% of the total money is um, get written off in your one itself okay and the balance would it be fair to assume that it's spread yeah. equally no it's a second year is different or is it 15 yeah, then then 8.1 15 or 18 15 so it's study 6 12 and then 8 point something 8. over the next 8 years yeah but um and um you know uh, in the past we have mentioned that you know we look to make a payback of uh, 5 years uh, yeah. uh so uh, how should one interpret that is it that you know the cash that we'll deploy in any particular given uh, song or a particular year that you know we intend to recover that on a post tax basis over five years how does one read this payback period so this payback period without including the cost of capital this is the amount of money that if you have, if you have, um, acquired content as marketing at 100 bucks we are charging it off um with 36% and 12% 48% out in their first two years but we internally work on a benchmark that is 100 rupees will get recovered in the first 60 months got it uh and uh, if stay over time you know um in the streaming world it, you move from more uh, premium to uh, paid subscription uh, does the payback period reflect that new reality or you think you know the payback period could become even uh, shorter if that were to happen if it moves towards a paid side all my growth projections 23% uh, on the music growth with their 32 to 33 percent adjusted at the company level, all of them are uh, shared with you without considering the upside that will come from paid subscription. Got it. Th- thanks for taking my question. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Please subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another update. Please like, share and comment.